Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. I am super excited to bring you a species profile of a fish I absolutely love. We've had it in the fish room now for a number of years, and that is the Frontosa. It's big, it's majestic, it's got tons of color, has some special care requirements. Let's go take a closer look. Appreciate you being here. So these are Frontosa, and they are in a rather large tank. It's 700 gallons and eight feet long. This tank, is part of the Ohio Fish Rescue. It's one of their displays. It is an absolutely amazing fish tank. And I wanted to highlight this tank because it's very rare to see Frontosa in all their glory shown, displayed in a tank that truly fits their needs in a colony such as the one you see here. And so this is what we're gonna be looking at throughout the video. Frontosa are amazing fish. They are from Lake Tanganyika, which is one of the three major lakes in Africa. The water there, is relatively hard it's actually very hard water with a high ph a ph that ranges from around eight and a half up to a ph of nine depending on where you're at in that lake we'll talk more about the water parameters for these fish but they are amazing and there are lots of varieties there are about 10 or 12 different collection points for these fish as well as a couple man-made strains that and they're going to vary slightly depending on their collection point size these are large fish and what you're seeing here are fish that are approaching their full size. It's kind of hard to imagine with a tank that's, I estimate somewhere around at least eight feet long, probably four feet wide and at least four feet tall, if not larger. So it's really hard just to gauge how large these fish are, but they are pretty close to full grown. The males are gonna get somewhere around 12 to 15 inches. Females are going to stay a little bit smaller, usually around 10 inches or so, and it's going to take a very long time for them to get to this size. Frontosa do not grow fast, so it's going to take a little bit of patience to watch them grow. You're also going to see throughout the video the males have a much larger nuchal hump on their forehead, so that part that sticks out, that tends to be far more pronounced on males compared to females. Now, as I've mentioned, the different varieties, the different collection points are gonna have slightly different coloration, but they all look somewhat similar. As you can see here, both the males and the females show fantastic color, dark blue to almost black vertical stripes, alternating with these lighter blue vertical stripes. And what's really special is when you get Frontosa in the right setup and you can see their dorsal fins and their anal fins and they're just growing and they've got the long trailers it really is a pretty cool sight to see. As you're gonna see throughout this video, their temperament, they are, for a cichlid, a relatively peaceful fish. They're not nearly as aggressive as a lot of the other African cichlids, and that can present some stocking challenges for us a little bit later on. They are not particularly fast moving. Again, as you're gonna see throughout this video, these are slower moving fish. They're not incredibly active, and they can live a really long time, and so you, you could, in captivity, see these fish live 15 to 20 years. I think what really attracts people to Frontosa is not only their beautiful color, but possibly their personality as well. They can go one of two ways. That The Frontosa can either be quite entertaining and they can interact with their owners. Other groups of Frontosa will tend to shy away a little bit or other individuals will tend to shy away a little bit. It really just depends on the Frontosas that you have. I think the other thing that attracts people to these fish is their size. As I said, with the males getting anywhere from 12 to 15 inches, these are some of the larger, more commonly kept African cichlids out there, and certainly some of the larger cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. Now, because of their size and their activity level, you are going to have some challenges when it comes to stocking. Now, what I'm showing you here is probably the best way to keep them, and that is in a large tank, that is a species only tank where you can really see how they interact with one another. If you really wanna keep them with other fish, you're gonna to have to be careful because while Frontosa grow very slowly, at full size, as you can see throughout this video, they have a rather large mouth and they will eat fish that are small enough to fit inside that rather large mouth. So the trick here is to find fish that are going to have roughly the same activity level, that are going to be okay in the water parameters that these fish enjoy, and are not going to get eaten later on. So 
If I were going to be putting fish with frontosa, I might consider some of the larger feather fin cichlids, especially like the cyathopharynx. These larger feather fins are going to inhabit open water, a lot of really beautiful color, and they are, for the most part, from Lake Tanganyika. Cynodonus cats, but again, I would choose some of the larger variety of Cynodonus cats. Bristlenose pleckles, full grown at about six inches for the males. They should be large enough that our, your frontosa are gonna leave them alone and still be able to do some algae control and they won't mind the water parameters. The smaller fish from Lake Tanganyika, long-term, they're not gonna work most likely. Uh, we're looking at Cipochromus and the Brichardi and the Shell Dwellers and the Julitochromus. When the frontosas are very, very small, they'll get along just fine. But as these fish grow into their full size a foot or more, these other smaller fish are just going to be food for them. Now I will say, I, ha I do keep my frontosa with geophagus and severums. That's actually worked out relatively well because their temperaments are basically the same. They eat roughly the same foods and they really just ignore one another. If I were setting up a tank from the start, I wouldn't mix those fish. It just happened to be the fish that we put together. It worked. It's not something I would recommend long term. What a lot of people want to do is they want to put these large frontosa with smaller fish from like Lake Malawi, smaller African cichlids like Mbuna and peacocks. That generally speaking is it could be problematic long term. And the reason for that, one, Mbuna and peacock cichlids are usually far more aggressive than frontosa. So even though they're going to be smaller, they are more aggressive and frontosa have a habit of being bullied by imbuna by peacocks. The second thing to consider is the imbuna and the peacocks tend to eat much, much more aggressively and therefore your frontosa are probably not going to get nearly as much food as those other fish. A third thing, especially as it pertains to the imbuna, the imbuna would prefer to have far more vegetable matter in their diet where the frontosa like to have a little bit more meaty foods and so that diet aspect may not work. So while they're all African cichlids and while they like the same water parameters, I generally wouldn't want to put Mbuna and Peacocks in with my Frontosa. The other thing to watch out for, again, because people think they're larger fish, the larger South American cichlids like Red Devils or Midas cichlids, Jack Dempsey's, Green Terrors, Texas cichlids, these are all generally speaking a bad idea because those larger South and Central American cichlids tend to be far more aggressive than frontosa. Let's talk a little bit about the water parameters for these fish. As I mentioned at the beginning, they are from Lake Tanganyika, which means they're going to want to have a higher pH, usually at least seven and a half. But if you can get that pH up into the eights, around eight, around 8.2 is where we keep ours. They do well there, but 8.2 into the upper eights would be ideal. Water hardness somewhere around 10 to 20 degrees on your KH and GH would work out fairly well. Like other fish, and especially your Lake Tanganyikan cichlids, they do need stable water parameters. Lake Tanganyikan fish tend to be a little bit more prone to health issues if the water parameters aren't stable. So we wanna make sure our temperatures are stable. They do best in the, around the upper 70s or so. So 78 to 80 is where we'd like to keep ours. They can go a little bit less, a little bit more, but we wanna make sure our temperature is stable. We wanna make sure that we have no ammonia, no nitrite in our fish tanks and that our nitrates for the most part are staying at around 20 parts per million or less. Feeding frontosa for the most part it's not difficult. We feed all of our fish north fin foods. Frontosa especially full grown would appreciate north fin cichlid pellets, kelp wafers, also frozen brine shrimp, occasionally frozen bloodworms and frozen mices. They tend to like to eat more towards the bottom. They generally don't go up to the surface quite as much as other fish to eat. So a lot of the sinking pellets tend to work best for us. Tank size. Again, you're looking at a massive tank throughout these videos in both locations. I can't stress this enough. Full grown frontosa need a large tank. I've seen lots of recommendations on the internet. I'm not sure I agree with most of them. I think if I were keeping a group of Frontosa, the minimum tank that I would even begin to consider is 180 gallon. Again, you're looking at fish, males that can get over a foot long. Generally speaking, they do best in a group such as what you're seeing here. And so ideally you'd want maybe a male and five or six females. That's gonna take a lot of space. 
when you're decorating that rather large tank. I like what's been done here with the lighter substrate that tends to show off their colors a little bit more. As you get into the darker substrates, those lighter colors tend to muddy up a little bit and you don't see quite the same dynamic and the same contrast between the colors. So lighter substrate works out really well. As you can see here, rocks, Make sure the rocks are very secure. These fish will dig from time to time. And if you've got a big stack of rocks that isn't secure, that'd be a great way to crack a fish tank. If you're going to do plants, what I would most likely recommend is you could try to glue Anubias to rocks. But for the most part, if you try to plant plants in the substrate, they will often dig through the substrate and uproot plants. The lighting here on this tank is also fantastic. Frontosa don't like to be blinded with really bright lights. And so lower, more subdued lighting tends to bring them out and make them feel a little bit more comfortable. As you can see here, a fair amount of swimming space, all right? These guys love to hang out in more open waters. Although if you look closely, you're going to see some of the fish are within the rock work. When it comes to filtration, here's where you have to these fish are more for advanced fish keepers because of their overall size and because of their, their tank requirements. When we're dealing with filtration, we want to do two things. We need to have enough filtration for a fish that's going to provide a fairly heavy bio load, but we also don't want the filtration return to be so strong that it's blowing these fish around. As you can see, these are not highly active fish. They just kind of swim in place. They're very relaxed, very subdued, so we don't want really strong flow for our filtration. Let's talk briefly about breeding Frontosa. This is gonna take some patience. One, because it's gonna take a little while for these fish to get up to breeding size. You're looking at potentially three or four years, possibly longer, depending on the size of the tank and your fish. Ideally, you'd want a male with four to six females, as I've mentioned earlier. The, these fish are mouth brooders, which means that the females will hold the eggs in their mouth for a, usually a few weeks. Part of it depends on the temperature at which you're keeping these fish and other water parameters. And then once the eggs develop into fry, she will spit them out. And it's gonna take a, at least a few more weeks, if not a month or longer, before the fry are really starting to be independent. When they are, when the fry are first seen, generally speaking, they're going to be fairly large. I mean, this is a decently large fish, so you're probably looking at somewhere around a half inch or so. So crushed flake foods, small micro pellets work, uh, even just a regular standard small cichlid pellets, sinking pellets will work just fine. I do like to feed all of my smaller fry, live baby brine, and these guys will be no exception. They absolutely love it. And so uh, one thing to consider though, if you are going to be breeding the frontosa, if you've got other fish in the tank like rock dwellers or open water swimmers like the feather fins or synodontus cats, you're probably not gonna have a lot of fry survive. So the most ideal way, the best way in my opinion to have the fry survive is when you notice a holding female, if you remove her to a tank where she can just hold those eggs and spit them out when she's ready, that might give you more fry survival or when you actually see the fry in the tank you could potentially remove them and put them in another tank if you've got a situation where you've got a lot of fish in the tank just generally speaking fry have a, a lower survival rate when they're in a community type of setting these are amazing fish as i hope you've seen throughout the video worth trying but they do have special considerations again they're not that active for a large cichlid they're not that aggressive so you have to be careful with tank mates they're going to get very large and they're going to need eventually a very large tank especially if you're going to keep them the way they were meant to be kept and that is in a group as you've been seeing throughout this video so if you can make those accommodations for these fish they are absolutely worth a try thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one